Treatment of the human face is one of the most important topics in color correction. Unfortunately, there is some disagreement on how to do it. There are also certain dangers that are pretty well agreed upon. One danger is that we don't have a lot of tolerance for putting more color in a face than is actually found in the photograph. We don't really like to have faces that are way too red. Um, this differentiates faces from many other objects that we work on in the picture postcard workflow. Most uh, natural scenery, for example, we will accept a little bit more color. In fact, we'll like a little bit more color than the camera sees. Faces, that's not necessarily true. We may want to even tone them down a little bit uh, because we, we uh, generally would like to see a face that's too pale in preference to one that's too red. That's one area that we agree upon. Um, an area of disagreement is how much texture to put into human skin. And particularly this is the case in fashion advertising, um, and particularly it's the case when the, um, when the skin involved is that of a woman. How much detail do you want to put into it? Because the more detail, the more realistic it looks. On the other hand, the more detail, the more imperfections it shows up, the more wrinkles will be accentuated, the more any sort of scars will be uh, accentuated, and generally it will make the person look a little bit older which is not always um, the best idea. Uh, so you have to decide before you work on the skin what your objective is. Are you trying to really make it look super realistic or are you going to try and make it softer? And if you're going to make it softer, how much softer do you want to make it? Um, because well, the, the obvious uh, uh, example uh, is Playboy magazine where they have tried for many years to have a very plastic look where their models don't have any pores at all. Um, you know, I, I kind of hate that. On the other hand, you do have to, to worry about how much you want to, of, of the detail you want to put in. I think there's a general consensus that if uh, a subject has an obvious blemish, that can probably be retouched out. But the question is, how about the skin itself? How about the natural lines of the skin? Well, let's take a look at uh, the advertisement that starts out Chapter 9, or, one, or uh, it's actually uh, postcard uh, or anti-postcard 9.2. Okay, this is um, professionally shot using a model who, uh, whose entire career depends upon her hands, and she's modeling for an ad where she's uh, advertising the artificial fingernails that she's wearing. Okay. Um, if we look close up, this is the uncorrected version. This is actually scanned film. It's not a digital photograph. You can see plenty of natural detail. I don't think it looks bad. Um, some art directors probably would. Um, and, you know, if you want to take some of it out, I guess the surface blur filter would probably work pretty well. Filter blur. Surface blur. And there's a nice plastic look for you. So there's before, there's after, and you see how it knocks out the detail and in the eyes of some people makes her look younger and more attractive. Well, heck with that. I hate that. Okay, back to the original. Um, if you're completely mindless and just following the steps of the, um, of the picture postcard workflow, you might want to take a look at the channels at this point. Red, green, blue. Red, green, blue. And you say, wow, um, look at this green channel. It has so much more detail than the red channel does. Sorry. Here's the red channel. Here's the green. Red, green. So maybe what we want to do is make ourselves a layer that's going to be set to luminosity. Um, go over here to the red channel. Blend some of that nice green into it. Um, maybe uh, add some contrast with the curve. Like that. Now go into the uh, green channel itself. Try to do somewhat of the same thing. Like that. And in the blue, which doesn't add much to detail, we can do, I guess, this. It's not going to harm the background. But you see how much more detail we're bringing out. This is almost always a good thing, maybe not so much so in faces. We'll see. Okay, so next step would be a luminosity step like that. Um, 
great the detail that we're putting into this picture. And if we go on down the line, many more things can be done to this. Um, we, could, uh, we could use the HK action, which we see in, in Chapter 13. Um, try something like that. That seems to work. And then, of course, we might do the, um, the Man from Mars uh, color boost action. Flatten the, the document first. Um, take it into LAB. From color boost, well, that's, that's too much color even for me. So we'll take, we'll, but definitely this, this luminosity layer, that adds detail. That's great. Um, and um, remove the color boost so the color isn't totally stupid. Cut this thing down a little bit. And of course, we would sharpen the image. So, so we sharpen like that. And there we are. That's, that's the end. And this is actually a fairly typical way of handling a typical landscape picture. No, nothing really unusual is being done there. We're adding contrast. Um, you know, if you, if you go back to, uh, to chapter four and look at the alligator's image, we didn't do anything more uh, unreasonable um, with this image than we did there or the Grand Canyon image. Um, it's just that people are not going to let you do this with skin. Let's go back to the original. Okay, let me revert. Okay, here's the original, and here's the um, so-called corrected version. Now, if you present this version to the model, she's going to kill you, okay? Um, and the art director is not going to be too happy about it either. The only good thing that you can do with this version that's on the screen right now is you can conceivably blend with it, because just as there are certain art directors who would want to have this version actually be softened with something like the surface blur filter, there are others who are going to want to have maybe a little bit more definition in it. Maybe 10% of the way to this thing. Nobody is going to go for this. Okay. So you may, you may want to just uh, touch, uh, take stock of the situation before you begin. Okay, what are you trying to do? Are you really trying to get more detail in it than this, like you would with almost any other category of picture? If so, maybe it pays to just do an extreme thing like this and blend with it <clears throat> to see how much that, that, that you can get in. But um, just keep in mind that skin is really different from anything else. Okay, so you make your decision. Now, in terms of the color of the skin, uh, it's... Here we don't have a problem because there's the, the background doesn't exist, so we can't make the background too colorful. It's unlikely we'd make the skin too colorful. But in other sorts of pictures, we do want to make the background more colorful, and we have to worry about the, the face getting too colorful as a result. So here's, here's figure 9.9, uh, .9, and we want, would want to be very careful here that the skin doesn't get any redder than it already is. So there are a couple of ways to handle that, but the recommended way is to use the skin desaturation action. Okay, it operates in LAB, and we get this little warning here, which you can turn off if you want to. And this is what the skin desaturation action does. Um, there's before, there's after. And this now becomes a little bit easier to color correct in LAB because it's toned down the skin already. So if you put a little bit more color back into it, it's not going to be a big crisis. You could also do this after you color correct it if you, if you like. I mean, it's not a perfect action. It's trying to figure out what's, what is skin and what's not. Okay, Let's bring it out to here so that we can see it in a more extreme uh, rendition. There's before, there's after. And it, it, it's not... Um, really possible to isolate skin perfectly. But you can see that, it's, that it is um, removing color from the skin without removing it from the much redder hat. Uh, so it's, uh, it, it's avoiding the brilliant reds because it recognizes that these are not, they, that's too red to be real skin. <clears throat> it's also missing the lipstick, which, is, um, which I think is probably a good idea as well. Um, there's some, some makeup, I think, down here that got on her neck, um, and it's missing that. Uh, unfortunately, it is getting the hair, so you have to be careful with it. And this is why the default is actually fairly low. Um, I think this picture is fairly easy to work with. There's before, 
there's after. And so the skin desaturation action, in my opinion, should be used routinely before the color boost, before the modern man from Mars. It's easy. I, don't, I rarely play around with any of the options. I just say, okay, this picture has a face in it. Fine. When we're done with the, with the contrast addition, if any, then we uh, run the skin desaturation action, go into uh, LAB, and finalize the color, and that's all there is to it.